Hi there and welcome to Getting Clean on the Prairies. It's a beautiful evening out here in the garden. Um, the weather is turning nice and warm here on the Saskatchewan prairies and I'm starting to feel a bit panicked now because it's like okay we need to get stuff in the ground. It's warm uh, about a week, week away from our last frost date so you know stuff like beets, carrots, potatoes I should have them in the ground now so um, I just got off work for the day and so I have to spend my evenings out in the garden which is not a bad thing because it's beautiful out here so you'll see over here this little setup here is how I'm uh, going to be planting or how I did plant out my beets and carrots I'm going to show you how that's done and I also use this seeding square and you're probably wondering you know how does that work in a round container so I'll show you how I kind of made it work for me to uh, mark out for my carrots and beets. So let's get going and I'll show you how I direct sow some beets and carrots in containers and planting some potatoes under straw. So I thought if I used my uh, seed seeding square here for my carrots and beets just to kind of give me a good guideline to follow in, in my spacing here. So the red dots are for carrots. So I'm just going to mark them out here. Not really, it's supposed to be about a half inch deep, quarter to a half inch deep. So of course this doesn't work perfectly in a round container. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to extend out from each spot here, just eyeball it, just mark another, another few holes here. It should be spaced out pretty good. And maybe squeeze another one at the top of each one here. And I'll just kind of remark them here a bit before I put the seeds in. These ones I'm going to be planting some Danvers half longs. So another thing that I realized when I did the first one here is you gotta kind of keep track of which holes you've dumped them in and go in some kind of organized go in some kind of organized fashion here when you're putting your seeds in because I and it was all over the place and then not sure which ones I had put seeds in. I'm trying to put only a two or three in each hole and then I can thin them out later. But uh, I just can't be bothered to be too picky about it. I think I'm putting probably three or four in a hole. Some of them are not making the hole but We'll see how it goes. So in this container, I'm going to try planting some Chiagia beet. I cannot pronounce that very clearly, but this is a red and white striped beet supposed to be non-bleeding and it's an Italian heirloom and I think it's going to be a bigger beet I'm supposed to plant these about two to four inches apart so I'm going to use the yellow um, seeding square spots here to spread them out So these seeds, of course, are a little bit bigger than the carrots, so I should be able to easily put two in each hole. And 
see how the germination goes. So now that I've got these planted up and uh, got to give them a good watering, I'm going to try the method of covering up these um, containers, uh, just blacking them out so that uh, they can germinate. And I'm going to, you've probably seen a lot of videos where they do this using boards or cardboard or something to cover up the soil until, until the seeds germinate. So I figured I got some extra red tubs here. They are the same size so they'll cover this up easily. So I'm just gonna set one on top of each of these like that. Probably put a little bit of weight inside here so they don't blow away. And then So that gives it pretty good coverage, I think, with using these tubs. So what I'll just do is come out each day, give it a check to make sure the soil is staying moist. And it should be about five to 10 days till germination starts. So as soon as I see that happening, I'll remove the tubs from the top and uh, let them grow from there. So it will be interesting to see how this goes. So I've got my first row ready here to plant up. So I pulled back the straw and made myself kind of a fairly straight row. I'm just going to check the soil here and show you what it looks like under all these layers of straw. So we brought this, uh, we cleared off this space here two, two falls ago and it was all trees and bush and uh, we chopped out the trees. So the ground wasn't too weedy. It was quite uh, quite nice forest floor type um, soil when we covered it up with straw. So uh, I'm just going to show you kind of what it looks like now. If you dig down, we've got some really nice uh, soil to work with here and I can see there's some moisture, thank goodness. We are um, haven't had rain yet this spring. Um, we had very little snow since um, this new year and it is looking very dry here. We're actually getting quite concerned that we're heading into a drought because there's no rain in the forecast. So I'm going to just put these potatoes directly on the ground here and then we'll cover it up with some straw. So these are the red Norlands that I was uh, chitting and I had a quick video on that a few weeks ago. These things are Got some really nice sprouts going on them. So I'm just going to lay them out about a foot apart. Set them on the ground with the sprouts heading upwards. I think the spacing is supposed to be about a foot apart. So I will get them all in place and then I'll show you before I cover them up. So this would be my third or fourth season of using this Ruth Stout uh, method of planting my potatoes and I definitely won't go back to the traditional method of rototilling and digging and weeding with dirt only. I really like this method. It works great for me. It's a lot less maintenance and I have no problem with weeds. I get pretty good, pretty good production off of these. I think the soil's only going to improve every year as the straw breaks down and continues to add nutrients to the soil. I also, in the fall, before I um, 
covered it with some more straw. I pulled it back and dumped a lot of uh, compost and, and partially finished compost under the straw here so that it uh, broke down over the winter and just added that extra organic material to the soil. So that's one row of potatoes planted. These are my red Norlands. I'm going to use my buckets here that I planted these potatoes in about a week and a half ago as my markers. Okay, so the potatoes are planted and that probably took less than 30 minutes to do it from start to finish. So I'm just going to show you my rows here. So this is what a no dig, no weed, no watering type uh, potato garden looks like. I didn't have to try and get my husband out here to rototill the garden for me, which if you're married to a farmer, that can be quite a challenge getting them to get you to, to help you out in the garden and didn't have to worry about digging in the potatoes they are all covered up my only concern will be moisture so i'm going to leave these for a week or so and hopefully we will get some rain because the straw will retain a lot of moisture it doesn't need to be watered too much so so the sun is setting now and I managed to get my potatoes planted, got a couple of kinds of carrots going and some beets. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, leave me a comment, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you can be notified when my next video is up on the channel. Stay tuned to see how all this direct sowing is going, and I will keep you updated on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.